Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. We are here to wrap the market action for you. The Nifty rallied nearly 8 tenths of a percent to retest that 8950 mark, even as the third quarter GDP numbers surprised the street, beating all analysts and economic estimates. Uh, strong gains in the European indices were also lending further support to that run in the index. And it ended just about five point shots of that 8950 mark, but at 0.75% or 66 points, Nifty has seen the biggest jump since the 1st of February. It was metals, FMCG and realty stocks which are amongst gainers. And the broader market trend was also positive at about 4 is to 3, that is 4 gainers for 3 losers. But um, index futures were also witnessing buying a lot. Sure, certainly. What we've seen is uh, more accumulation in buying. This time it's a little more prominent because we've seen, uh, you know, more than 2 to 3 uh, percent towards open interest when it comes to nift Nifty futures as well as the bank Nifty futures. Well, I'm going to wait for the fine print at 5.30 for those numbers but at least as far as the options market is concerned we're looking at more writing in the lower level puts which means more support building up in the likes of the 8900 put and the 8800 put as you can see we're looking at a spike there what may be considered as something of uh, you know a cautious stance from the bulls is taking uh, you know a little bit of a hedge so you've seen a little bit of an increase towards the 9000 call as well when it comes to maximum open interest now that's shifted from 8500 to 8800 put as far as the upper level is concerned well it continues to remain with 9000 so that's going to be your key resistance level moving into the next couple of days on the whole it's been a steady day of trade shada and it certainly belongs to the bulls uh, completely, Agam. If you look at uh, the Nifty index, it was the metal stocks which were really, uh, really uh, driving that Nifty rally. You have Tata Steel, Hindalco, both gaining nearly 3% um, for the session. You had Mahindra and Mahindra, Kotak Mahindra Bank also among the other top gainers. But uh, if you look at Dr. Reddy's and Sun Pharma, those two pharma names that you can see here, and not only them, uh, the entire pharma pack was really doing well after Trump said the burdensome FDA approval process keeps medical advances from reaching the needy. Uh, that was a statement he made in the morning, probably indicating the need to speed up drug approvals, which is of course a positive for Indian Pharma. You had IDEA, Gale and NTPC, all of them seeing weakness down to the tune of 2% each. Aisha Motors also giving up uh, nearly 1.7%, which brings us to the uh, February auto sales numbers. Yeah. Maruti, Aisha, both double digit growth. Yes, so you know, uh, the fortunes for both the stocks were surprisingly different. So, Aisha Motors has come up with a 19% growth in its, uh, you know, Royal Enfield segment, and yet the stock's fallen. Right. So, it seems mm -hmm. like either people are taking profits or they are not happy with a 19% growth on a year on year basis. <laughs> Maruti, on the other hand, has been, of course, steady, 11% growth uh, overall. Well, we haven't really seen too much when it comes to the stock, but uh, this time around, Maruti's, uh, you know, growth has been driven by the utility vehicle space. and this is one area where they had lagged behind to a certain extent. This is coming around. So it's positive for both Maruti and of course for Aisha Motors too. Unless and until if, uh, investors feel that the stock has run up a little too much and you know the price currently doesn't uh, in, uh, in, in involve the kind of volumes that we are looking at. But on the whole I would say it certainly hasn't been a terrible month for either of these companies. Anyways, these were the two which were doing well even in terms of the stock price performance. Correct. Um, but yes, that does to some extent again tell us that demonetization probably uh, it's one more factor suggesting that yes it hasn't the impact hasn't been as worse as expected no. but having said that it was also the real, it was also the real estate uh, pack which was really seeing a fantastic move today yes uh, so uh, you know you already mentioned that we've had about four gainers for three losers in the broader markets once again we have seen a little bit of a change and a reversal when it comes to the market breadth so let's take a look at the Nif nifty 500 uh, once again stocks that's been standing out today this time is JP Infratech has gained 17.5%. It's followed by Soba developers, as Shada was mentioning. And along with Soba, there have been a, a bunch of realty stocks. We have SunTech Realty, Colte Patel, Oberoi Realty, of course, Delta Corp, about a third of its revenues or 25% of its revenues come from realty as well. Anantraj, Unitech, all of them. In fact, uh, you could say about a good 7 to 8%, eight of the first 15 stocks are belong to the realty pack. We have some gains in Central Bank as well, which is up as much as 9.8%. With respect to losers, we have some weakness in Moil, down 3.5%. Orient Cements, down 3.1%. Bharat Finance, 
JP Associates, Symphony, and PI Industries all losing anywhere between two and a half to three percent. So, uh, you know, as you can see clearly, the momentum this time and for today is towards the gainers, uh, and what really stands out is the realty space. But uh, on the whole, we'll be keeping out for keeping an eye out for more cues as to what will drive the markets and whether or not we will eventually see the Nifty move above the 9,000 mark. I suppose a lot of bulls are waiting for that level to come now. But that is all that we have for today. Stay tuned in a Bloomberg Quint and we will see you tomorrow.